Welcome back. You're still watching So It's Today. Much appreciated for joining us. Now, before the ad break, we started the conversation on possible renaming of uh, the Santon Drive. We can the conversation now and welcome Leah Nott, who is the Democratic Alliance Member of Parliament, to give us their perspective on uh, the proposed uh, renaming. She joins us now via Zoom. Leah, much appreciated for joining us. Welcome to the show. Thanks for having me and thanks to your viewers. Much appreciated. I mean, let's start by maybe you can let us know exactly what the DA, what the DA stance is, you know, on the proposed renaming of Sentin Drive to Leila Khalid. Well, look, as you know, Joburg has gone through a succession of mayors and the system in the city has deteriorated over time quite extensively. So what we're saying at the moment is that the Community Development Department doesn't even have the money for the renaming of Santa Drive. They're actually trying to find it within the Transport Department. So they want to take away the money that's meant to repair roads in order to rename a, a road that essentially doesn't carry a negative connotation to something that actually has, you know, controversial, uh, you know, connotations for some people, whilst, you know, Leila Khalid was a hero for many. Um, she's not a South African hero. And Sanson Drive in itself is not a, a negative name that, you know, brings people a lot of offense. What it will do, though, is it will bring about economic re repercussions that businesses will have to face following the renaming. I'm glad that you mentioned that because my next question was, uh, you know, uh, if, uh, you know, this name, uh, you know, from the DA's perspective is problematic. Uh, 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 you know, is it the issue of renaming itself or just the proposed name of Leela Khalid? But I mean, I've been hearing quite a lot of, uh, you know, your colleagues there in Parliament and including some within the uh, Joburg uh, City Council uh, raising concerns that, uh, you know, this might be uh, to actually, um, how do I put it, um, to, 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 to humiliate the United States of America because we know that uh, the U.S. consulate is also on Santon Drive mm -hmm. there. Well, what's interesting, I don't think it's really about the U.S. consulate. It's about the South African citizens. At the end of the day, we are facing an unemployment rate of over 35%. Our youth are closing in on the 60% mark in terms of unemployment. This is going to have, and many businesses, including a Discovery, who employ almost 14,000 people, have you know stated the, their concerns with regards to the financial obligations this will place on them. And what that means is then that cost will be covered by employees who will either have to be, you know, you will have restructuring. You've got all sorts of fees they have to pay in order to change their property details, etc. So, you know, whilst the international relations is a concern, because as you know, we are in trade agreements with various countries and we have also signed up through various anti-terrorism legislation, yeah. which will affect our important trade, you know, important export trade between ourselves and, and countries such as the U.S., we have many South African heroes. So if we wanted to rename, we have got many people who have made a profound impact on the lives of residents across our city. Leila Khalid is not a South African hero. Whilst she represents, like I said, uh, you know, she represents freedom for some, it causes a divisiveness between the residents of Johannesburg because we have such a diverse and multicultural population. So really, it's about the South African citizens and protecting their infrastructure, repairing. It's not trying to, you know, siphon money out of your roads repairs and your bridge repairs to rename a road that doesn't need to be renamed. It's, it's a political statement and it's grandstanding at its best. It's not for the people of, of the hand. Mm, um, uh, Leah, two things now, uh, you know, as we wind down the conversation mm -hmm. at this stage. Uh, what does uh, the DA intend to do? I mean, is there any legal recourse uh, you know, that can be taken or, uh, you know, what is mm. at your disposal uh, um, in terms of, uh, you know, any attempts to stop the renaming there? Mm. And also, do you think that uh, this proposal was ill-advised? Well, look, it's been going since 2017, 2018. The original proposal was um, to rename it Romala City and the EFF then promoted, uh, proposed Leila Khalid. So it goes back quite a number of years. But, you know, we are in the public participation process and, you know, we are a party of, of good governance and, you know, law abiding. And in essence, we are using this public participation process to engage with residents on the ground. Um, all five of our councils within the Santon constituency have been on the ground um, every week since they, they announced the public participation. They've also collected almost 5,000, um, you know, comments. 
residents, of which about 96% are from a reason there is pipes fixed. I mean, Santon is renowned for water leaks. And if you drive around Santon Drive, you'll see there's at least 14 along that road that haven't been repaired in months. Mm. And the city says it has no solution to immediately deal with it. But now they want to go and try and find money to rename a road. So you can understand the frustration of the residents. So we're using that process. Um, but we have been engaging with the businesses, um, Councilor Linda Shackelford, as well as Councilor Martin Williams, have engaged with many of the businesses. Um, the the Santon Central District, which consists of over 50 businesses, whose properties, I think, range uh, over 17 billion rand, and they employ thousands of people, um, who are also not happy with the renaming process. So we're engaging residents, we're using the process, we'll submit them. And our hope is that you know the City Council won't, as it has done in the past, just gloss over the public participation. But if they do do that, then we will approach our, our national head office, you know, to see what our, our legal recourses are there. Mm, um, you know, I'm glad that you mentioned that, uh, you know, uh, during this course of time, you know, in terms of the public participation, you mm -hmm. are making sure that people get to understand exactly uh, what are the issues there. So uh, in terms of the people that actually, you know, are not familiar with uh, what mm -hmm. is going on in terms of naming the roads and stuff, uh, how do we make sure that uh, they take part in these uh, public consultations? Well, I would um, encourage anyone, you know, and every citizen to contact their local ward councillor um, because your ward councillor is the primary, you know, conduit between yourselves and the city and they will have the exact, you know, uh, process that you can follow. They are also facilitating the collection of comments, both positive and negative, that can be submitted to the city on, your, on, on the residents' behalf. Um, residents can also email, I think it's uh, Dominica M at joburg.org.za um, in the community development depart department who's collecting those comments. Um, but as councillors, you know, they are ensuring that they are aware of which comments are coming in. Because as I said, we've had a history where the council hasn't been given a list of the objections or the comments. And mm. it makes it very hard to make a decision when you cannot see how residents have actually participated. Leah, much appreciated uh, for joining us. Uh, you know, always a pleasure having you on the show. Thank you. That's uh, Leah Not, the, the DA Member of Parliament, joining us uh, this evening as we unpack the proposed renaming of Santin Drive. We're going to park it there for now. So, Weta Today returns on the other side on this. Do stay with us. Now, in 2018, the Johannesburg City Council adopted a motion to rename Santon Drive after Palestinian icon Leela Khalid. This has, in recent days, been a hot topic of contention with many for it, as well as many against its uh, proposed uh, renaming. Bahai Sudumelan, good evening. My name is Tabo Molokwan. Welcome to this edition of So It's Today. Tonight, we are in conversation on the proposed renaming of the popular Santon Drive. Joining us to kickstart the conversation is Bram Anikom, who is a board member with the Africa for Palestine organization. Just to unpack more on it, Bram, much appreciated for taking the time. Uh, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me on your show. Much appreciated. I mean, maybe let's start the conversation by just getting a better understanding of what exactly the Africa for Palestine organization is and also what is it that you do as an organization? Africa for Palestine is an organization of South Africans who have taken on the responsibility to focus uh, their humanitarian work on solidarity efforts with Palestine. Um, as you're well aware, South Africans, we have a history of benefiting from solidarity and international support in our struggle. So uh, many South Africans, including myself, feel a very strong uh, responsibility to, to show their solidarity with the oppressed people of Palestine. Um, as a means almost of paying back our historical debt. Mm. Um, you know, as we understand it, uh, your organization is for the renaming of uh, the Santin Drive to Leela Khalid Drive. Uh, maybe you can tell us more, uh, you know, about it and why is it that uh, you are for it? Because obviously there is, there has been some pushbacks, uh, you know, uh, with the proposal when it was uh, actually um, uh, proposed. Uh, in back in 2018 and even now we're still seeing other organizations including other political parties also just uh, not going you know for for it I think that um, if we if we if we look at the history 
um, the vast majority of elected officials representing the outcome of a vibrant democracy in their collective uh, wisdom voted in favor of the name change. Uh, so I'm not sure which parties or structures or outfits or organizations uh, believe that they're better placed than the elected officials of our country in representing the will of the people. Um, it's clear that there are many, many political parties, Al Jama, ANC, EFF, and a number of others, Good Party, I'm sure, and others, who are supporting the, the name change. Uh, they've been elected, and uh, if we look at the outcome of our last election, 66% of voters voted for political parties that were very clear on Palestine. So the will of the people is clearly not going to be hoodwinked by those of a minority. Um, mm. There's a very clear outcome. Uh, there are certain parties take ACDP, they got less than uh, 2%. They actually got less than 1% in the national elections. They went down from 1.5% to 0.5. Uh, and a number of other parties that got very small amounts. The DA, by the way, is a party that <clears throat> seems to go out of its way to claim not to be firmly on the side of Israel. Uh, they, they claim to be um, on the side of peace and so on. Uh, and then of course, ANC, MK, EFF, Al Jama, a good party and 66% uh, of political parties that were voted for by millions and millions of South Africans actually have mm. very clear policy positions in support of Palestine. Mm. Um, you may be aware and that whenever public participation is uh, engaged around issues like the NHI, for example, uh, all it takes is for uh, Discovery to send an email to its millions of members with a link saying, click this link and you'll uh, submit your complaint or objection to the NHI and millions of submissions may be received in objection, but that doesn't make those uh, minority uh, interests more important than the elected uh, officials representing the majority of our country who are in need of better health care, for an example. Uh, so, I mean, I think why I went into that was just to say that, look, we are as an organization in support of the name change, and so are uh, the vast majority of South Africans, and so are the vast majority of elected officials and parties that were voted for by South Africans. Mm, um, Brahm, I understand what you're saying, but, uh, you know, I was just saying uh, so what, you know, what do we say to those that have, uh, uh, you know, uh, the view that actually uh, Leela Khaled doesn't qualify for such an honor because, uh, you know, irrespective of, uh, you know, uh, her international recognition, you know, uh, uh, with the work that she did previously and some other things that people are saying, uh, uh, you know, they're saying that, look, She's not a South African, actually, so there's quite a lot of stalwarts in the country that should actually, uh, you know, uh, get their names on, on, on these various streets of the country. Um, what do we say to those, um, you know, that are on the opposing end, uh, maybe in terms of just explaining the importance of, uh, uh, you know, naming the street after her? Look, there, there are some people who will be blinded by prejudice with agendas who won't want to see the humanity of the Palestinian people. And they'll come with a million and one reasons why we shouldn't uh, uh, name a street after an iconic freedom fighter. A freedom fighter, by the way, who many of our struggle heroes, take Johnny Iso, for example, uh, one of the MK operatives and very well-known fighters, known fighters from uh, the Western Cape. He named his daughter Leila after Leila, and so many of our struggle icons actually named their children after Leila Khalid. Uh, you'd know that Nelson Mandela, well, Nelson Mandela had a meeting with Leila Khalid, she came to South Africa, and they spent about an hour or two together, just one-on-one, -on -one because of the solidarity and the relationship they have. The mm -hmm. road, Winnie Mandela Road, would be crossing Leila Khalid Drive. Uh, we have many no roads, by the way, named after people from other countries. We have Nyerere, Nyerere, Julius Nyerere roads, we've got yeah. Mugabe roads, we've got Magandi roads. Uh, we have quite a number of roads named after other people from other countries, and we have a lot of roads in South Africa. Uh, so anybody coming out with a strong argument saying it shouldn't be named after Leila Khalid is probably hiding their agenda or not even hiding it that well. Mm -hmm. And that's why I spoke to the fact that, you know, in any decision, particularly the minority who are not used to their comforts being affected, 
uh, we will try their best to circumvent uh, redistribution of wealth or uh, rebranding of uh, an area. I mean, we have to unpack also what is Santon. Santon is the richest square mile on the African continent. Santon was formed by big business and very wealthy, largely white business people with an intention of having their own CBD because many of them, in my view, and I think the historical uh, documents to prove this kind of motive, felt that Bramfontein, yeah. the CBD, was turning too black for their liking and they wanted their suburban headquarters. So these mm -hmm. communities not wanting transformation, these communities wanting to isolate themselves uh, and not um, recognize Palestine, they would have no problem calling it uh, Obama Drive or so on, you know, so mm -hmm. it's, it's, not, it's not really well motivated, I would say. Brahma, unfortunately, we've ran out of time, but much appreciated for joining us. I know that, uh, you know, the public consultation is open. Uh, the submissions there until October 18th, uh, you know, either approving or rejecting the proposal, as you said earlier on that, uh, look, uh, uh, you know, there are consultations uh, at this present moment uh, uh, as part of, you know, the actual way of doing things in uh, in, in the city, in government in general. But uh, much appreciated for joining us. And I hope that uh, we'll have more conversations, particularly looking at, you know, various issues such as this. Much appreciated. Sure. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Bram Hanekom, uh, a board member with the Africa for Palestine organization uh, who are for the renaming of Santin Drive to Lila Khalid Drive. Let's take a quick breather when we come back. The Democratic Alliance will join the conversation. Do stay with us. Welcome back. You're still watching Soweto Today. Much appreciated for joining us. We are getting closer to the end of the show, but we continue the conversation on the possible renaming of Santin Drive. We now welcome Debo Homashilompani, who is uh, from Safe South Africa Civic Movement. Uh, he is the National Communications Director there to just have a conversation, uh, you know, about uh, where they stand as an organization on the renaming of Sentin Drive. Devo, much appreciated for taking the time. Welcome to the show. No, thank you so much, uh, Tavo, and uh, also to the viewers of Soway2 TV. Thank you so much for inviting us. Much appreciated, man. I mean, as we understand it, Save SA Movement uh, you know, civic movement is against the renaming for the, uh, you know, very particular reasons. Maybe we can expand uh, on your stance on the renaming and why it is, uh, you know, why are you rejecting it, if I may put it that way? Yeah. No, you're right. We, we are rejecting this uh, renaming uh, uh, of uh, uh, something drive to Leila Khaled. Because, look, uh, we... I mean, we, we, don't, we don't undermine the fact that Leila Khaled is a freedom fighter there in Palestine and then at some stage he even hijacked planes and so forth or even attempted to hijack planes. But, you know, we look at this thing uh, with the South African eye to say, but why do you go so far when we have other heroes and heroines who are still yet to be honored in this country? And, and, and when you honor somebody that we cannot relate to. I mean, it doesn't make uh, uh, social sense to us because our belief is that when you rename something, it has to relate to the people in that particular place, you know. So the people of Jovek should be able to relate to Leila Khaled. But now it's somebody that we, we just read about, we hear about, but uh, we don't have a direct a contribution to this country from here, you know. So, and we give example. We say, but we have, we have people like uh, the late Brenda Farsi. Yeah. Mm. I mean, uh, you know, you're I making mean, uh, a point. I mean, I was speaking to the Democratic Alliance earlier on, uh, you know, mentioning the very same thing that South Africa has got, uh, you know, has a lot of uh, people that can still, uh, you know, be honored in terms of. Uh, giving them, uh, you know, the board in terms of the names of streets and stuff, uh, you know. Uh, but from your own understanding, was this, uh, you know, ill-advised? Because I did ask the DA, but, uh, you know, uh, they didn't really explain it uh, thoroughly for us. 
was it really ill-advised? I know the process started back in 2017 uh, there, but now there are public uh, consultations or participation uh, for the public to be able to you know, engage in this issue. Um, why are we not addressing some of the pressing issues that we have as a country, as many of you are saying? Mm. No, it's true. Why do you have to take the whole energy and invest this energy in, in something that will not benefit us? You know, we look now recently, five kids died. And then you talk about renaming straight. You know, uh, uh, mass shooting twice in, with less than a week. And then you, you, you talk about the naming of the street. You know, we view this as a, as a political grandstanding rather than honoring uh, Leila Kate uh, Khaled. Because, you know, if you want to honor somebody, honor the people that we know, people that we can relate to. That, that is our call. We say, we, you can't. I mean, this, this, whoever advised them, yes, this was an ill advice. Because how do you leave other people? You know, we've got kings that were there before. Kim Pepus, you know, we've got lots of kings that can can even be renamed there. We've got, as I mentioned before, the likes of Brenda Farsi, the likes of Miriam Makeva. Why don't you use such particular people? And we also have a problem with this uh, issue. When you rename, when you rename uh, uh, people, I mean the streets, you use only the politicians. Why don't you use also people who contributed, even pastors? Even archbishops, why don't you? We, we use such particular people. We only focusing on on politicians and 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 all those that uh, and all that. So no man, we can't uh, accept that. That's so why we are rejecting that that renaming of, of the street. Look around, have some people in the arts who participated in the struggle, and use those particular people. The likes of Chico Twala, for an example, they contributed. And people can relate to Chico Twala. People can relate to Mira Makaba. People can relate to Brenda Fass. Mm. Um, Debo, as we wind down the conversation, because we've ran out of time, I mean, uh, you know, uh, you did highlight the uh, important aspects of uh, your rejection uh, when it comes to this proposal. Uh, I want to understand now what happens now, uh, you know, especially uh, from, uh, you know, the civic movement's perspective. Are you saying that, look, we can give the name, mm to anyone else, uh, you know, who has been instrumental in uh, the history of the country now. Uh, if, you know, this passes, you know, and then Leila Khaled um, uh, has been named, uh, you know, on behalf of, uh, you know, as a replacement for Sentin Drive there, uh, do you think that it will also impact on our relations with uh, the likes of our trade partners such as the US? Uh <clears throat> Yeah, it, it, it will, but we, we normally don't want to be drawn into the issues of, a, of, of these uh, partners because first thing first, let's focus on the issues that affect us daily, you understand, especially mm -hmm. as a civic movement. We're looking at the bread and butter issues. You know, all these issues of Palestine, yes, we know somehow they can affect us, but we don't want to take sides and say we go with the Palestinians, we go with the Israelites, and then because... Uh, uh, USA is also in line with Israel. Those are the conversations that we we we, are, we try by all means to run away from and focus on the issues that really affect our people on a daily basis. Mm. They were much appreciated. Unfortunately, we've run out of time, but we will definitely have you back on the show just to discuss uh, various issues that are happening uh, across the country. Debohomashilombani, much appreciated. No, thank you so much, uh, Tavo. Thank you so much. That is Tebo Homa Shilompani, the National Communications Director at uh, Safe South Africa Civic Movement, joining us uh, as we wrap up the conversation on the renaming of Sentin Drive. On that note, that's how we wrap up today's episode of Soweto Today. And remember, we love hearing from you, so please feel free to talk to us about this episode. Send us an email at Soweto Today at Soweto TV. You can call or WhatsApp us at 081 and the rest of the team. It's a good night from us and thank you for watching. <laughs>